Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this amazing series, I'm Aditya. So in this video, we are going to see the concept of pusher and also we will see how we can use the pusher channel and all those stuffs. So without any further ado, let's begin. So before we jump to pusher, I forgot one thing to do. So we'll come back to this part as well. So in the message controller, if you see, if we are just getting the messages for the, like where the receiver ID is with the receiver that we send message to but we are not getting the messages that we send to the uh, to the person so in this case what we need to do here is we need to do oring so we can do lore like this and then we need to do something like this here so we are gonna say uh this is going to be uh so here we will say the receiver id is this actually yeah receiver id is this and uh, sender is request dot user dot uuid it and then so this should be like this perfect now what this is gonna do is this will use the or uh, thing and I also forget the exec here. Great. So two quick fixes from the last video. Sorry for that. So just here we will put the or clause. So this means wherever the receiver is this, also wherever the sender is this, just so, or actually this should be the receiver. So receiver where the receiver is this or the receiver where the receiver is this. So this is all we need to do. So because when, suppose if uh, me I'm sending message to person A so at that time person A is the receiver but when person A sends message to me then at that time I am the receiver so I need to make sure that the receiver has these two values. So that's great now let's go back to the pusher. So in the pusher so this is kind of paid so there are some free limits but uh, if you want to have like uh, some extra uses then it's paid. So there is a concept of channels and there is a concept of beams. So beams is mostly for mobile applications or native applications while channels is for web applications. So I have already created a channel for my previous uh, bootcamp. So when I was running the Mew bootcamp at that time. So I'll just go with this one. And here we have to get the app keys. So these are the app keys. Please don't try to copy this because I'm going to remove them once this video is done. So I have put these app keys in our environment variable over here. So if I go to our env file, so we have app ID. So that's the ID of our app, the key, the secret. Oh, so we have two secret now here. So let's do this as pusher secret. Pusher secret, pusher key. Pusher key, let's do pusher app ID. Let's do pusher cluster. Okay, and we might need to rerun this again. So let's run this again. And after that, we will go back again over here and just go to getting start, getting started. Now, this is the front end code that we will write when we write our React application. But currently, we are more interested in the back end code. So there are options like Laravel and whatnot. So here, I'm going to choose Node.js and just copy paste this code as it is because this is the code that we need. We will just change make some changes in this code so i have also installed the pusher so you all you need to do is just do npm install pusher and it will install pusher for you so once you install pusher with npm install pusher then wherever you are sending the message so after you save the message in database you just send it so you just trigger it actually so this thing this is actually sending in sorry saving in the database so it's as good as saying it is sent but this is more like notifying the user that hey user you have a new uh, message so here i'm gonna do take the values from our environment variable they are actually the same but fine process dot env so it will be pusher uh, app id then we have pusher key so let's copy this and then we can just do a bulk edit so here 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 to so all the way like this to this this 
this and this. Now what we need to do here is instead of push pusher app ID, this will be pusher key. This will be pusher secret because that's what we have it in our env file and this will be for cluster great and then now you can name your channel anything you like i'm going to name this channel according to the user's receiver id okay so whoever is the receiver i will just name it as channel and the name of the channel is plus so i will just concatenate it so it would be uh, our request dot body dot receiver id and event you can name event at whatever you like but i will like to name the event same like we i did for channel so it will be event hyphen plus request dot body dot receiver id perfect and our message will be nothing but request dot body dot message or actually text cool and here let's change it we will make this as message send great now let's go back over here and test it. So what we are going to do is we will go in the debug console. So this is our debug console. And here we will see what happens. So if we go over here, send a message. So this is a new message I'm going to send. I'm going to say, I hope you're well and doing fine. Let's send it from here. Unauthorized. Oops, uh, I guess our token got expired for some reason. Let's get a new token. So here, I'm, well, it's okay because even though we have these things, but as we are taking fields one by one, so in that case, it helps. So that's why I took the fields one by one in our function rather than putting all the object as it is in the database. So let's quickly save it. And this is our token. Let's get this token. Let's copy this token. Go to authorization. Let's remove this token. Let's substitute with a new one. Let's go back over here. Send message and we already have receiver and message over there and it says oh uh, post send or oh, post its message send actually sorry for that hit send message send now if we go to our debug console you will see that this is the message now if i expand this it says okay hi this is a message hope you are doing well and fine and that's the success of our pusher trigger so now on the front end we just need to listen for this trigger and we can receive the notification in real time so that's pretty much it for our backend api so if anything is required we will add it on fly again so that's not a problem so from the next video onwards we'll focus on the react application and let's build the front end for our this application so see you in the next video goodbye